Hey there friends, Jeff Fritz here, and I'm going to be talking to you in this last episode of the Getting Started with .NET Aspire series about deploying an application that you've configured with .NET Aspire. Now, there's a handful of other videos in this series that I encourage you to check out that are going to answer all your questions for anywhere from what is .NET Aspire, how do I install it to work with my application on my local developer workstation, how do I configure it, how do I use the dashboard, and finally ending at this episode, talking about how to take that application system, that distributed application, and deploy it to maybe a cloud service like Azure. There's all kinds of content around this, including slides, documentation, and sample code that you can get from our GitHub repository. Check out the link in the description just below that'll get you started and you can follow along with the sample code that's available in the repository. Now, where we left off at our last episode, we talked about configuring um, additional .NET Aspire integrations like a Redis cache and even reconfiguring that Redis cache to use a customized container like the Garnet uh, flavor of Redis that's been built by Microsoft. Today though, we're gonna set up and we're gonna deploy all of that distributed application to Microsoft Azure and specifically Azure Container Apps so that those applications, our API and our website can discover each other and run together. So when we build an application with .NET Aspire, there is nothing in the application that is tied to Azure or to Azure Container Apps. That's something that's picked up by a secondary tool that inspects the .NET Aspire configuration and decides how to deploy, in this case, to Microsoft Azure. There are other tools that are available that you can use to deploy to, uh, to AWS or even to Google's cloud or Kubernetes if you want to use those tools. They're available out there. You can check them out in the .NET Aspire documentation. We have links to that documentation and to those sections in the description just below. But here, we want to show you how to use this with Microsoft Azure. Now, of course, we've made the easiest tools to use with the nice click-through wizard. They're all available inside of Visual Studio. So if you're running the latest version of Visual Studio 2022, you're going to see the ability to right-click on a project and choose to publish. So right-click on that app host project, and you can choose to publish, and it'll give you the option to publish your Azure Container app with .NET Aspire. All right, and it'll walk you through a series of questions to help you configure Microsoft Azure for your application system appropriately. But we're not going to do that here. Instead, we're going to use the Azure Developer CLI, or AZD. Now, I have a copy of this already installed and available on this workstation that I installed with WinGet. Now, AZD is also available on Mac and Linux systems. You can install it with Brew or APT on those systems. There's other ways to install it as well, but those are two of the easier ways that you can get it installed. Now, over here, I can start configuring my project to be deployed to Azure by using the azd init command. Let me do that now over in my terminal. So I'm here at the root of my project, and you can see all of the project folders out there, my API, app host, my weather hub, that's the web application, and the service defaults project. All right. Here we go, I ran azd init, and it's gonna start asking me some questions to set up my configuration to deploy this application to Azure. So how do we want to initialize our app? We have code in the current directory I want you to take a look at. So you'll see here it's scanning the current directory and it found a .NET Aspire application, and there's where app host is that it can use to configure the application. I'm going to confirm and continue initializing, and I can specify the name for my environment. So I'll call this environment that I'm going to set up out on Microsoft Azure, I'll call this uh, 
my weather hub. So there's my environment name. It generated some configuration files for me and it even put some next steps for me in this next steps MD file that I can go through and learn how to do things like configure as part of my continuous integration process. So now that these are generated, I can actually deploy by just executing azd up. So I'll execute that. Oh, I'm not logged in. I need to log into Azure. Okay. So we'll do azd off login, just as it's suggesting there to do. It takes me out here to my Azure login. I'll click through. Authentication complete. I'm now logged into Azure. Great. So now let's try AZD up again. And you see here it's going through steps. Downloading BICEP. That's the configuration template, the scripting language that we use to define Azure resources and how they communicate with each other. Now it's allowing me to choose a subscription that I want to use. Let me put that on my Microsoft employee subscription. I'll put it in East US 2. That's my favorite data center to use. There it is, my subscription, the location it's going to put it into, and it's already started setting up some progress on the Azure portal. And I can click that link and it'll open up the Azure portal and show me that it's building and deploying. And I can see it's setting up some resources for me, including a resource group called RG Weather Hub. Okay, that's pretty cool. And back here in the terminal, I can see that it's creating a container registry so that it'll have a, an instance and in, in snapshots of the container images that it's going to generate for both my API project and my weather project. So each time I deploy, it'll create a new version of that container and deploy it to my own private container registry that, that's called here uh, Alpha Charlie so far. Uh, oh, dear Lord. I, I don't need to know that because AZD and the BICEP configuration that I have will know how to communicate and deploy those appropriately. It's also created a log analytics workspace so that all that telemetry that we had being collected with our service defaults and showing up inside of our trace panel is going to be logged over there so that when our application is running in this production space, we'll be able to navigate over there and take a look at what's going on underneath the cover. All right, now it's, it's moved along a little bit. Hopefully we've edited out a little bit of that content in the middle and you can see it's deploying services. It's actually deploying the API service now and pushing a container image into that container registry right here. That'll get picked up and automatically deployed out to our Azure container apps so that it knows how to run that instance of, of source code that we've built and is running right now on our local system. And there it just completed and it's showing me the endpoint right there. Now it's going to deploy that cache service. Now you might not want to deploy and run Redis out of a container out on Azure. There are libraries, there are integrations that you can set up that will automatically hook up to hosted Azure services, including the Azure service for Redis Cache, so that you can use that uh, service that's available for you. It'll provision it and use that standalone service instead of you having to manage a container for this. We're showing this just so you can see how the whole thing runs if you want to deploy and manage containers that have other features brought in from other uh, deployed services out there. And finally here, it's gonna build the service Weather Hub and deploy that container image. Notice with both of these, they have an internal domain name. You can't actually access that from outside of the little network that is being built inside my resource group for my Weather Hub. And finally, there's the endpoint for my Weather Hub it's myweatherhub.bravemushroom-10, uh, whatever. Let's try navigating to that website and see what happens. And there it is. It's running on Azure. It queried and got the data from the API on Azure, and it's displaying my list of various weather stations. 
So let's go search for something else. Let's search for New York. And there's New York Manhattan. I'll click into that. And now I get the content for the New York forecast. All right. If I search for just York and we go click into some of these other ones and back into New York, it loads immediately because it's pulling it from the Redis cache that's now deployed and running out on Azure. Let's go over and take a look at that Azure resource group so we can see everything that was deployed. So here's the resource group and take a look at the various resources that were deployed, right? Container registry, two container apps, one for the API, one for the cache. I have my container apps environment, some log analytics workspace, a managed identity so that things are secured in how it communicates between those different services. And finally, the container app for my weather hub. Really great stuff that's all deployed and made available for you out on Azure with just a couple of commands at the command line. And now that I'm done, I can knock it down. I can delete that resource and, and so that nobody else can get to it and I can save a little money on my Azure resources. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to delete the resource with this command, az group delete, and I'll pass in the name of that resource, rg my weather hub. All right, I've deleted that Azure resource group off camera here. Thank you so much for watching. That's how easy it is to get started with .NET Aspire. Use it inside of your application configure it with some service defaults, some service discovery, get some logging capabilities happening in there, and set up your application so that you can deploy it to either a cloud service or some sort of hosting provider, or even to your internal, uh, your own servers. You can deploy using the exact same commands that you have available, or there's tools like AZD that are available to help you deploy to Azure. Thanks so much for watching.